in this video something about the capacitive voltage divider and uh, how you can um, hook up LEDs to an AC source. Perhaps you have sometimes tried to um, connect a LED via a capacitor to a high voltage and uh, I'm almost sure that was not very successful. I did this experiment today and I uh, burned out these ones. But anyway, uh, the voltage divider is very well known in electronics. And um, that's the, the key issue here. When we uh, have three resistors in series and connect them to a voltage source, be it an AC source or a DC source, uh, the voltage divides uh, in a direct relation to the resistance. And when in this example all the, all the resistances are the same and you have here 30 volts, here you will find one third of that voltage and also here and also here, so everywhere here 10 volts. And uh, that um, changes when we don't have the same resistors in that row. In this example, for instance, a 10K resistor, a 1K resistor and a 10K resistor. And I don't give the, um, the formulas, but you will always find in such a combination that the over the lowest uh, resistor, the lowest value resistor, there is the lowest voltage drop. And that is in fact quite logical uh, when we look at the electronics theory. And this refers to AC and to DC, no problem. That's something to take uh, in mind because when we try to make a voltage divider with a capacitor, we have in fact the same situation. I've made here a voltage divider with a capacitor, three capacitors of 220 nanofarad in series, and in between I, I have switched another capacitor, but uh, that capacitor has another value. I want to demonstrate that. Three capacitors always used for such an experiment. Non-polar foil capacitors, never electrolytics or so. Because electrolytics will ex uh, can and will explode on AC. And here we have the same situation. I have here 34 volts. Three capacitors of the same value because this capacitor here is shortcut, so it doesn't play a role. And here we find on AC uh, calculated these voltages, one third, one third, and also one third. But what happens when we uh, open that switch so that this capacitor starts to play a role? This capacitor is a big factor uh, uh, lower in value, 47 nanofarad, and that means that this capacitor starts to play a big role. I open now here the uh, interconnection, and now we look on the meter, 50 volts, and the pointer is at 12 volts. Well, that's 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 okay. Uh, it must be approximately 12 volt. But when I open here, let's see what happens. The voltage suddenly jumps up to, um, say, um, well, 50, 25 volts. And the reason is that when we uh, have this. Uh, capacitor also in the row, 
this capacitor has a very high AC resistance. And that AC resistance, here's the formula for that AC resistance. And just like the situation with um, resistors, uh, ohms resistance, here we have uh, AC resistance, we have the situation that um, high value, sorry, uh, yes, uh, a low value capacitor uh, gives a high voltage drop. So that's the reason why we see here now 25 volts. So the uh, AC must overcome here uh, this, in fact, high AC resistance. And that means that we have here a higher voltage. Um, it's important to tell that uh, both in this circuit and in that circuit, it is often not possible to take enough current out of that voltage divider. So in general, it's only useful for very small uh, supply currents. Let's go on. Um, that was one demonstration here. And the second demonstration is here. Here you see a green and a red LED uh, connected to a capacitor and then to 34 volts AC. I did an experiment today and tried to uh, connect that LED directly via the capacitor to um, that 34 volts. But it proved that um, these LEDs uh, didn't want to light up and some of them uh, got broke. There is of course a reason um, I have to take a deep dive in the electronic theory but I take that for granted. I only want to show successful circuits that I made and that are the circuits here. Normal small red LED, normal small green LED and when you mount here a resistor parallel to that LED, of course you may uh, reverse the anode and the cathode because this LED is connected to AC. And only uh, during the forward pulse of that um, AC it lights up and perhaps you can see that, that they somewhat flicker. They flicker, of course, on 50 Hz. In the Netherlands we have 50 Hz at the main supply. So, uh, what uh, is the good thing of this circuit? Well, when you want to uh, connect a LED to 34 volts, you need a big voltage drop here. That LED is approximately works on approximately 2 volts, say 2 volts. So uh, you must work away, get rid of 32 volts and that means a resistor and in such a situation that's quite high, 10k will often work very good, but that resistor gets warm or even hot. And the good thing from this unit is here that these capacitors don't get warm or hot because there is no uh, energy dissipated inside that capacitor. The only problem from this circuit is that the LEDs don't light up so very fierce anyway. Could be a problem, but it's useful. And of course uh, you have to hook up these LEDs to the secondary side of the transformer. And not to a DC source because then they don't work because a capacitor blocks DC. So it only works on AC. And finally, uh, that's perhaps the most interesting thing. By the way, here again the warning, never electrolytics on AC. You will surely have an, have an explosion directly or within a minute or with about 10 minutes or an hour, etc. You could also use this circuit, a capacitor, 
to supply a lamp with a filament. And that filament has to have a resistance, in this case, on 34 volts AC, of between 30 ohms and 70 ohms. These lamps worked all, but here are and many other lamps. And of course, I have to test them all whether they will work or not. Some Christmas trees lamps uh, worked, and other Christmas tree lamps did not work anyway. But the most important criterion is. 70 ohms DC resistance. Um, and uh, important is that for such a, an experiment that the load, and this is in fact the load, this is the source, this is the AC resistor and this is the load, that the load is in this example resistive, purely resistive. When you connect another, another kind of load, for instance a, a coil, the whole circuit changes its properties and you get, for instance, series resonance. That's possible. So, that's why I've drawn this thing here. Anyway, I want to demonstrate finally how these lamps light up. 6.8 microfarad non-polar foil capacitor and when we um, connect the you can see that the lamp lights up Christmas tree lamp 70 DC ohms and the uh, the lamp is supplied via that 6.8 microfarad nonpolar capacitor. And here another lamp. This is a lamp that was used in a car as far as I know. It doesn't light up very fierce. But it lights up and that's very important. And all these lamps that I've showed earlier work. So this was only a small demonstration how you can uh, use LEDs and connect them to an AC source with a somewhat high voltage uh, to avoid the series resistor that can heat up. No problems when you want to uh, make a LED light up on 12 volt or so. 1K resistor always works. Or a 2K2. But when you go higher than say 20 volts, the resistors can get hot. And this could be a solution uh, as an indicator lamp in an electronic circuit, radio or whatever. So, finally the schematics another time. This is the solution of the puzzle. How the voltage uh, divide with a 1K resistor in the middle of that row. That was measured by the way. And it's interesting to do experiments all kinds of experiments. But of course it takes time and especially to supply a, a certain um, electronic device via a non-polar foil capacitor um, it takes some experiments. By the way never connect this to the mains. 210 volts or 230 volts, that can be very dangerous.